Hello, little learners. Welcome back to our pre-K and TK classroom. I'm your teacher today, Mrs. Lara. So nice to have you here this morning or whenever you're watching. Can you tell me your name? Because I like to try to guess your special letter. Let's see. Oh, I think I got your special letter this time. Let's see. I'm going to make a big line straight down the middle. A little line up top, hopefully it stays, and then another little line. Let's see, what letter have I made? I, is that your special letter? Ooh, I see some of you saying yes, but some of you are saying no. Remember, your special letter is the first letter of your name. And if I don't have it yet, I will soon, don't you worry. Today is day five of the five days that we're going to be together this week. So I'm going to add another magnet to my 10 frame. Let's see, where should I add it here? So let's see, one, two, three, four, five. I have two on top and three on the bottom. And two and three together make five. And this week we're learning all about pumpkins because it is the month of October. And in October, you might start seeing jack-o'-lanterns pop up on front porches around you or at the store. They'll have big boxes of pumpkins that you might wanna dive into. At least I do when I see there. <laughs> They're hard and round. You don't wanna do that. And you might start seeing pumpkins in a pumpkin patch maybe if you go and visit. So I hope that you loved learning about pumpkins this week. For the last time, we're going to do our five little pumpkin song. So you're going to need your fingers. One, two, three, four, five, and a gate. And we're going to put our five pumpkins on top. Are you ready to do our finger player song? Five little pumpkins sitting on a gate. The first one said, oh my, it's getting late. The second one said, there are witches in the air. The third one said, but we don't care. The fourth one said, let's run and run and run. And the fifth one said, I'm ready for some fun. Ready for a spooky sound. Ooh, went the wind and out went the light. And the five little pumpkins rolled and rolled and rolled out of sight. I wonder where the pumpkins went. The rolling of the pumpkins reminds me of Spookily, that book we read, huh? Where the pumpkins rolled onto the fence and Spookily saved the day. Ooh, looks like it's time for our letter. And another book that we're gonna read together. So let's see what clues our letter gives us. Dear Miss Lara, notice I started on the left and slid over to the right. That's called tracking and you use your pointer finger, which is the one next to your thumb. When I read books, I read left to right, left to right, left to right. When I read books, I read left to right. That's how I become a strong reader. Dear Miss Lara, I am a fierce yellow pumpkin. Fierce, that means strong. Ooh, almost a little bit scary. Ho, 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 he, he, he. You will run when you see me. Oh no, I wonder if we're gonna read a book about a scary pumpkin that's gonna try to make us run away. Read about me if you dare. That sounds like a challenge. No book is gonna scare us, right? Let's see what book we're going to read. It is called The Fierce Yellow Pumpkin by Margaret Weiss Brown, pictures by Richard Igleski. So remember, the author, who's Margaret Wise Brown, she wrote the words, and the illustrator drew the pictures. And look at the pictures. Can you tell what the story is gonna be about? I can see the grin of the jack-o'-lantern curling up. Oh, I hope it's not scary. And there's a crow in the very first page that has a button. Let's see what this book is gonna be about. There was once a small pumpkin in a great big field, a very small green pumpkin the size of an apple. The fierce sun burned down on the little pumpkin and he grew and grew, and pretty soon 
there was a fat, little, round, little, yellow, little pumpkin in a great big field. So look, there's the green pumpkin. Do you see who's next to the green pumpkin? It's mice. Ooh, I wonder if they're going to be characters in our story. Now this fat little round little yellow little pumpkin grew so fat and full of himself that he began to think he was a very fierce vegetable, as fierce as the sun that warmed his fat round sides. Ho, 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 he would say. When I grow up, I will scare the field mice out of the field like the scarecrow does. The little pumpkin would dearly have loved to make a fierce, ferocious, gobble, gobble face like the scarecrows at the far end of the field. But try as he would, his own pumpkin face stayed smooth and yellow and shiny. So there he is. Now the pumpkin doesn't have a fierce face. And does it look like the mice are running away? No. Look at this one's even leaning on him. Not a very scary pumpkin. Then one day the sun did not shine as hot as fire and blackbirds filled the skies. They began flying over the big field. There was a burning smell in the air of leaves and a crisp tingle and tickled that fat pumpkin sides. There were so many birds in the sky that the scarecrow was busy from before daylight until after daylight chasing the birds out of his field. Well, look at all those birds. And there's the scarecrow. He's trying to chase all those birds away. He's super busy. I don't think he's doing a very good job. His gobble gobble face became droopy and dreadful. The wind blew whoo, through his hair. He lost one scarecrow eye. The old scarecrow knew that if there was anything that blackbird is scared of, it is a one-eyed scarecrow. There he is, losing his eye and all these birds all around him. But then, that night and the night after, something began to happen. The first cold frost came into the night, and the fat little, round little, yellow little pumpkin woke up one morning and discovered that he was a fiery, orangey, yellow pumpkin. The color of the sun, a fierce, burning color. Well, there's the mouse, and actually, if you look at his face, he looks a little worried. Now take a look at this picture. You see the scarecrow with one eye there, and there's some children playing in the background, and there's our pumpkin. I wonder what those children are going to do with the pumpkin. Let's see. Then three little children came galloping through the big field past the old one-eyed scarecrow. They ran right up to the fat little, round little, orange little pumpkin, and the little girl called out, Here he is! Here's our terrible pumpkin! I wonder. So they cut the pumpkin's heavy stem with a little saw knife, each taking turns. They carried the pumpkin home across the field to their house. The little pumpkin liked that, because remember, he wanted to be scary. And then, with the little saw knife, they hollowed him out, all empty inside, sweet smelling and clean as a whistle. Then they cut one big round eye into the side of his face, a big round hole, and the little pumpkin liked that ho ho laughed the pumpkin, the fierce yellow pumpkin. I'm a one-eyed pumpkin for sure. Now here's something you might do with your family, is carve a pumpkin. There they are, still carving the pumpkin. They carved a nice eye out of him. Nice nose and nice mouth. Ho, ho, laughed the pumpkin, the fierce yellow pumpkin. I'm a fierce yellow pumpkin for sure. Mice will run when they see me. He was certainly a fierce and ferocious pumpkin with a terrific terrible face. After a while it was night. There was black darkness all around, inky black darkness. The children came in with a lighted candle and stuck it inside the pumpkin so that the light shined out of his big round eyes and his triangle nose. 
was a horrible sight to see. Are you ready to see it? Whoa, look at that. That didn't scare me. Does it scare you? <laughs> Maybe a little bit scared. Smile through the fear. <laughs> and the children danced about him, singing a song to the terrific, terrible pumpkin with the zigzag grin. There's the children dancing and laughing. And the little pumpkin was fierce and happy, and he sang, ho, 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 he, he, he. Mice will run when they see me. Look at that poor mouse is so scared. And the mice did. <laughs> so wasn't that a cute story about a little pumpkin that grew up to be a big, ferocious, fierce pumpkin after he became a jack-o'-lantern? Maybe you have one of these at your house. Now I wanted to point out that the author, Margaret Weiss Brown, is also the author of another book called Good Night Moon. That might be one that you know. So if you like that book, Good Night Moon, then you'll like this one too. And check out her other books as well. Now it is Friday. On Fridays we do a little shared writing. So we're going to go over to our writing board and we're going to write down all the things we learned about pumpkins this week. So let's walk over. I wonder what we're going to include. So look at our board. It says pumpkins with the special letter P. Now I want you to think back to all the things we learned about pumpkins. Where do pumpkins come from? Do you remember? First, they're a tiny little seed. So let's put our seed right here. If I was drawing a seed, I know it's kind of like this and around like this. Looks like a pumpkin seed. Now they sell pumpkin seeds at the grocery store in bags and people like to eat them all when they're dried up, maybe with a little salt. So this is what a seed might look like. If you're wanting to follow along with me, get a piece of paper and a pencil because right now we're gonna write the word seed together. So that's an S. So I start at the top, E, and the last sound, D. That's D, seed. That's what a pumpkin is, it's a seed. Now pumpkins can turn into many things. What's one thing that you remember a pumpkin can turn into? That's right, a pie. Yes, let's write a pie. But first let's draw our pie. So this is our pie. Now I like whipped cream on my pie. So I'm gonna add a little dollop of whipped cream here. We're gonna draw some pie. Here's our pie, our pumpkin pie. Now let's write the word pie. Are you ready? Special letter P, I, and E. A pumpkin can be a pie. Pumpkins can also be jack-o'-lanterns like our fierce yellow pumpkin. So we're gonna draw a jack-o'-lantern here. Now I have a little trick to drawing pumpkins. Are you ready to see it? First you draw an oval like this, and then you draw another half oval, and then another one like this, and then it's a pumpkin. See? You have to add a little stem. To make a jack-o'-lantern, you need this triangle eyes. How should our jack-o'-lantern feel? I think fierce. And then we'll draw like a little bit here, a little mouth. Now you can draw your jack-o'-lantern however you like. Mine's a little snaggle to jack-o'-lantern. Now let's write the word jack-o'-lantern. J, J, A, C, K, O, L, A, N, T, E, R, N, jack-o'-lantern. Now what else did we learn about pumpkins this week? Hmm, how about, ooh, there's a yellow flower and they wither away and that becomes a green pumpkin. So maybe we'll draw a yellow flower and a green pumpkin. Here, there's a flower and it withers away and becomes a little green pumpkin, which I'll draw right here. That's part of the life cycle of the pumpkin, isn't it? So maybe we'll write the word life cycle. O-I-F-E, life, I go life cycle of a pumpkin. So look, we learned so many things about pumpkins, didn't we? Oh, many more than I can include here. 
But right now, we're running out of time, so I'm going to get over to our project place because we need to finish out our week with a very special project. So I wonder how many steps it's going to take me to get over there. Do you think more than five or less than five? I think more than five. I think seven. Let's see. One, two, three, four. Oh, less than five. Only four. Maybe I need to take smaller steps next time. So we're going to be making, this is not quite done yet, but we're going to be making a pumpkin kind of finger play tool. And I'll show you the poem as soon as we finish. But it's going to kind of look like this at the end. So what you'll need for this activity is some white paper. Now my paper is called cardstock. It's a little bit heavier, but you can use any paper that you have on hand. Some green paper for the stem. You're going to need scissors and a pencil and a popsicle stick and glue stick and some black paper. And then if you want to make yours extra fancy, I used a little bit of orange paint and some sponges because we're going to sponge on some orange to give it some texture. So we'll start there. First thing you're going to do is you're going to stack your white pieces of paper on top of each other like this. So see? And then you're going to draw a pumpkin outline. That means just the outer edges of a pumpkin. So let's see. I know I'm going to make my pumpkin big and round. That means it's not going to have any edges. So we're going to start here, go around, and then we're going to come back up like this. Well, see, mine isn't. I know it's hard to see the pencil mark, but then you're going to take your scissors and you're actually going to cut out that pumpkin shape all the way around. This is what's called an organic shape. An organic shape doesn't really have any edges and it doesn't have a real form that you recognize. Like this could be an oval, it could be a rectangle, kind of in between. So here we are. I'm actually going to go down a little here. Cut around and around and around. Using my helper hand, save the scraps for another project because we love to recycle. And this is kind of like what my pumpkin is looking like so far. So for the next part, you're actually going to need to glue these two pieces together. So I'm going to take my glue stick. You can use a regular glue, liquid glue if you like as well. And let's see, I'm going to glue it all down like this. And when you hear the poem, you'll understand why it needs to have two sides. So I'm going to glue it down like this. Make sure they're kind of even on top of each other so it kind of looks like one big pumpkin. There you go. Now before the two sides dry, you're going to want to put a little stem in there. The stem is what attaches the pumpkin to the vine. So I'm going to cut out a little stem out of my green paper like this. Okay, let's see. Does that look like a stem? Looks like it's on top. Then I'm going to stick it in between the two pieces of paper right before it dries. And I might just add a little more glue to make sure that it sticks on there. All right, glue to the edges like this to make sure that it sticks. And then I'm going to add another little piece of vine with the green paper. Get in there. There's the stem. And I'm going to make it curl out like this. So here is my paper. I'm just going to take a little piece like this and then cut it and curl it up. Let's see. Cut around and around like this and curl it in. And you can cut your vine however you'd like. This is just how I cut mine. And I think it just adds a little special touch, as if the pumpkin had hair. <laughs> All right, then add a little more glue. Put that in there. And the next step, okay, there's our vine. See, it's looking like a little vine that's sticking out of it. The next step is we're going to add a jack-o'-lantern face. We're going to do it to just one side. So for that, you're going to need some black paper. Now, we're also going to be painting our pumpkin orange. We're going to sponge on the paint. 
I chose not to do that first because of the time I have with you. But since you have a lot of time at home, you may want to sponge paint your pumpkin first and then add your jack-o'-lantern face. But I'm going to do it a little opposite today so you can see the finished product. So I'm going to cut out some eyes. I'm going to make some triangle eyes. A triangle is the shape that has three sides. It looks like a thorn or a pointy piece like this. I'm going to add them to my pumpkin. All right, let's see. Glue them on. Two eyes here. We need a nose and we need a mouth. Almost there with the nose. Another smaller triangle. And then I'm going to cut out a mouth. Oops, like this. Cut out a mouth here out of my larger piece of black paper. Go all the way down. So I'm going to cut out like a crescent or like the letter D like this. Then I'm going to cut down like this. And then maybe I'll cut out some teeth. Make it really fierce here. Cut out teeth like this. So you just cut out a notch like that. Maybe another one over here. And maybe one in the middle. And look, there's our mouth. I'm going to glue it on so you can see what it's going to look like. All right, here we go. Now remember, if I go too fast for you, you can always watch our videos on the Valley PBS website and also check them out on YouTube. You can pause them so that you can see and go at your own rate. Okay, so here's our jack-o'-lantern. Now the next step we're gonna need to do is actually stick a popsicle stick in between here. I'm gonna add just a little bit of glue again to the popsicle stick. Kind of stays in on its own, but I like to add a little more glue. And then, here's one. Here's what it's gonna look like. Here's one that's kind of already done that I'm going to use. So we're gonna sponge paint it orange, and then I'll tell you the poem. It's pretty fun. I used to love doing this activity with my class. And then when they would leave, they would go up, and they would say the poem to anyone that would want to hear them. They would just laugh and laugh. So, all right, here's my sponge and my paint. So I have this fancy sponge thing that I bought at the place where everything costs a dollar, but you can actually just use a little piece of household sponge that you use to wash the dishes or your fingers if you don't mind getting messy like I do. So we're gonna sponge paint our pumpkin going up and down. And again, if you wanted to do this part, you could do this part first before adding your jack-o'-lantern face. But because of time, I wanted to make sure that I had my face on there so you can see the finished product. Okay, I'm gonna sponge, 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 keep sponging. You'll see that I can go pretty quickly, but you may want to take your time getting all the edges and nooks and crannies of the pumpkin. I'll put it this way so you can see a little bit. Here we go, all the way around. Now you don't wanna get it too thick because then it will not dry fast. You'll have to wait and wait and wait. The waiting is no fun. Okay, there's one side of the pumpkin. Now I'm gonna do the other side. I'm just gonna put this here. I'm going to do the other side of the pumpkin really quickly so I can tell you my poem. Quick, quick, quick. Get through the sponging, Miss Laura. <laughs> what I like about sponge painting is it leaves a texture. So if you look at it up close, you can really see you know, the texture. So it looks almost like a rough pumpkin. All right. Here is our finished product. Look at this. I'll leave this over here. Here it is. This is what it looks like. You ready for the poem? It goes like this. Pumpkin, pumpkin, round and fat. Turn into a jack-o'-lantern just like that. <laughs> what do you think? You can try that with people. Say, hey, check out my pumpkin. Round and fat. Turn into a jack-o'-lantern just like that. <laughs> so I hope that you give this project a try. It really is a fun one. Um, and it really reinforces rhyming skills too, because fat and that rhyme, of course. 
So give that one a try, and I hope you enjoy it. Before you leave, I have another book recommendation I think I mentioned earlier in the week, Pete the Cat and the Five Little Pumpkins. But I wanted to mention that this book has a song that goes with it. So if you check online, you can check out the song of Pete the Cat and the Five Little Pumpkins. I hope that you enjoyed learning about pumpkins. Until next week, boys and girls, Read, play, and use your imagination every single day. Miss Laura sends you a big smooch. Mwah. Goodbye.